All right, dealing with money, <laughs> it's never easy, and it turns out that your mentality may actually hurt your bottom line. Here to explain how all that works is Chase Wilsey of Wilsey Asset Management. Chase, good morning. Good morning. Okay, oh look, the hat is still there. Right? Right there. It, did, it didn't fall off the I table. I kind of want it, you know. We, no, you can't keep it either, Chase. <laughs> Hands off that hat. Sorry. That is very valuable <laughs> stuff. Um, the psychological traits can be hurting people's returns, and we've talked a lot over the years of how emotional the markets can be, how yep. emotional the whole process can be explained. Yeah, I mean, emotions weigh very heavily, and there's this thing that's called the efficient market theory, that, yeah. that markets are completely efficient. I, I really disagree with that theory because emotions, psychology, people were emotional beings, and that psychology weighs very heavily on, on our investment philosophies, right. and that's why I think there's different pockets of opportunity for buyers to actually find good investments. So people are thinking, no, I'm good, I'm a good investor, that doesn't affect me, it really does affect everybody, and their own way even if they think they don't it really does let's go through some of these traits here um, overconfidence bias is one of them uh, I'm thinking these are the people probably who don't think uh, it affects them but tell me what overconfidence bias really means so the overconfidence bias is the idea that again we overestimate our ability yeah. to you know make decisions or, or just our abilities overall I mean a great example of this is if you look at like a survey of drivers that uh, mm -hmm. over 70 percent of drivers believe they're above average well, actually, you break that down, it can only be really above 50%. So, you know, people do have that tendency. And the and same thing happens with investing. Right. You always hear about people's winning stories. And, oh, you know, I bought this stock. And it's, well, you should be like a multimillionaire if you continue to have these exactly. successes. But that's not the case. I mean, a great example that, that I have is, you know, we had a potential client back in the, the tech boom. Right. She had Qualcomm stock. It was $8 million worth of it. She never sold it because, again, she was overconfident about that particular stock. Well, Qualcomm fell, I believe, 80, 90% during the tech bust. Her $8 million crashed to under a $1 million. Wow. Very painful experience. In a matter of how many years did that? Just a couple of years. In a couple of years, it went from an $8 million value to, wow. Yep. yep, so that's that overconfidence idea that you have to be very careful and you have to be very aware yeah. of that. And you have to understand, you're gonna have difficulties when you invest. I mean, we tell people all the time, you know, we're, we're professionals at this, we invest right. money for our clients, we're wrong a third of the time in the short term. That happens. You're going to have periods that are difficult. Things aren't always going to be rosy. How, how do you balance out? It's a great example you brought up uh, in the overconfidence bias, because how do you balance out the, that lady's experience versus when, when you're told, hey, stay in there for the long term, just keep it there, don't pay attention to it, don't worry about it. Uh, was she not advised properly that that was heading in that direction or just the, the bubble burst on tech and it was just unforeseen? Because most people like me are like, oh, I don't want to touch it until I need it. And, and that's where I tell people, you, you have to know what you own. And, and a lot of times that's the advice is, oh, just don't worry about it, right. don't worry about it. And I say, no, you need to worry about it, but not panic about it. You need to understand sure, sure, what's sure. going on with your investments. Understand what's in your portfolio. Qualcomm, Cisco, yeah. those companies during the tech boom, they were trading at excessive valuations, made absolutely no sense. You got to get out of things yeah, when they're yeah. too expensive. That's the truth of the matter. Okay, uh, next one here we have availability bias. Mm -hmm. What is that? This is a tendency to, to think of examples that easily come to mind that they're actually more representative and is actually the case. Hmm. So what actually drives us many times, we talk about the emotions. A great example of this mm -hmm. is when you think about shark attacks. Shark attacks aren't very common at all, yeah. but we think they're a lot more common because they invoke that fear in us. I mean, you look at it, it's actually more common to die from the flu, to die from an excessive cold, but people are kind of shocked by that because yeah. the shark attack is a lot more, I think, fearful. That's what drives that. Now in the markets, same concept. I'm gonna equate this more to recessions, to bear markets though. People always now, when things start to go down, like we're seeing right, right. now, that's where that emotion comes in. Like, oh my gosh, the first thing that comes to mind, we're going to have another 2008, 2009 on our hands, and the market is just going to crash completely. Yeah. That's that availability bias. What is invoked in us is that, that fear, and that's what drives our decisions, and always thinking about the worst case scenario. And, and drives the fear, which is the emotion, which then kind of leads us into the herd mentality mm -hmm. here, right? Yeah, and the, the herd mentality is just this idea that everybody goes with the crowd. Yeah. And it, it's very hard on our emotions, actually, when you break it down from a, a psychological point of view, to go against the crowd. 
I mean, this is kind of, you talked a little bit about the tech boom already. Yeah. This is why people were buying dot-com companies that made absolutely zero financial sense. We talk yeah. about pets.com, you know, all these dot-com <laughs> companies that had no financials to them, right. but everybody else was doing it. You know, it's funny, our, our firm back then was talking about how Cisco, it made no sense. And we, we used to do workshops back then. People got up and left because they said, this guy doesn't know what he's talking about here. But the problem was wow. this herd mentality. Everybody wants yeah. to pile into things when they're going well. And same thing on the downside. Everybody wants to get out of things, which drives that market up and down. That's why at our firm, or what you call a contrarian investor, it's a lot harder on the emotions, but you want to try and get ahead of that herd mentality. You want to be buying things when nobody else wants them and selling things that's when smart. everybody else wants them. That's, that's the way to do it. Uh, Chase Wilsey, we thank you as always. Um, the hat, as you notice, has disappeared. The security came Back and in the took vault. it away. Back into the vault it goes. I told you we couldn't keep it. <laughs> Chase, thanks as always. Good to see you. Thanks for having me.